A few months back, I did a number of tutorials on arrays. However, there are some important concepts that I did not cover. One of those is dealing with sparse arrays or values of undefined and null in an array. We're going to take a look at that in this tutorial. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Being able to work with arrays is an important skill and there are a lot of principles that are necessary to understand. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can deal with sparse arrays and undefined values or values that contain a null. Now, in a previous tutorial, I covered how to work with undefined and null and the difference between them. And I'll include a link to that tutorial in the description. So let's take a look at sparse arrays and undefined and null values. But first, let's make sure we understand what a sparse array is and how that is different from an array with undefined or null values. So here I have set up a couple of arrays. The first one I just define and then I include the values here. One of those values is a null and then one of them it becomes undefined because this variable has been declared and nothing's been assigned to it. So when I assign that to position two or the third position element two, it becomes undefined. The other array right here, this is a sparse array. There are elements of the array that do not have a value. Now, before we go any farther, let me just show you both these arrays in the console. So let me open that console up and let's take a look at this one first. Now, as you can see, this array has a null value. It has an undefined value. It also has something that says empty. And where does that empty come from? Well, if we jump back right here, that was element four that I did not declare. Now, if I display RE2, those parts that are skipped are just considered empty. Now, this is what we call a sparse array. So there are elements in the array that don't have anything in them. It doesn't have a value of null nor a value of undefined. That may be strange to talk about null and undefined as a value, but that's the way we refer to it. And it is considered different. The fact that the element is empty or has a null or undefined is considered different. And so that's what we want to look at is how we deal with that. There may be some situations where it doesn't matter to us, but there are a lot of situations where it does matter if there is a sparse array or if there are values that are undefined or null. All right, so first let's, let's take a look at iterating through an array. And let's first take a look at Ari. We'll do that one first. And we'll use a regular for loop. So we're going to let i equals 0. That's the start of the array. And then we will run the loop to the length minus 1. So that will go to all of the elements in the array. And then we'll just increment i. So here's our for loop. Now let's first just do a console log statement and see what we get. And we're just going to log each element. All right, like that. Save that and refresh. Now notice what we get for that empty element. We get undefined. It simply displays undefined. However, when we were looking at the rays, we saw those as different. And we'll see how they can be treated differently as well. Now, let's take a look how that for loop would act on a sparse array. You probably guessed they're all going to display as undefined, but let's go ahead and show that. Yeah, so the two empty elements display as undefined. So now working in a for loop, if we're iterating over an array and we're trying to avoid undefined, null, or empty elements, well, there's a simple way we can do that. Using the truthy and falsy that's available in JavaScript, we can just check the value like this. Let's see, I'm doing RE2 in this one, so let me... 
change that. Then when we log to the console, we'll see that we don't get any of those undefined elements. So let me comment out that log statement, save that, and let's go ahead and refresh. Make sure we put, we're displaying the right array. Do this again. All right, so now we're just getting the values, the elements that have a value other than null, undefined, or is simply empty. And that would work as well with the other array. Oh, I'm realizing, oh, right there. I'm going to do length minus one, I need to do less than or equal to, or I could just do less than array two dot length. Now we're getting all the values there. And then we can do the other array as well and see that it works the same way. So I'll just change this to Ari, and then we'll do it. Now we'll get those three values. So that's one way in working with those if you're iterating over that. Now, the for in loop work, works really well with a sparse array because for in will automatically skip any empty elements. Now, if you're not familiar with the for in loop, I have a tutorial on that and I'll include a link. So let me comment out this for loop and then we'll do the for in loop. We simply declare a variable and then in the array we want to, to iterate through. So we'll do re first. Now the array contains the index. So if we want to display the value, we need to do it like this. Save that. Let's go ahead and see what we get. So with Ari, we still see the null and undefined value. Notice we don't see the empty value. That doesn't show up, but we get null and undefined. Now, if we do Ari2, which is our sparse array, none of those empty values will show up. And so that's a great loop for working with a sparse array. Now, occasionally, the fact that there is no value in an array can affect what we're doing. So let me give an example here. Let's say we want to sum these values and then we want to get an average of them. So, and I'll just log that to the console. We can do that with reduce. Now, if you're not familiar with the reduce method, I have a tutorial on that and I will include a link so you can review that if you choose to. But basically what reduce does, it allows us to cycle through an array and combine all of the elements using what we indicate in the function that we pass into it. And in this case, I'm going to add them together. That's what I'm doing to it. And so that's going to give us a total value at the end of all of the items in an array. So now Ari, has a null and an undefined value and then an empty value. So let's see what happens when we try to reduce that array. Oops, I forgot to put return. That's an important part when using reduce, refresh, we get any n, not a number. So it's trying to add the null value, it's trying to add the undefined value and so we get any n as a return value. So that didn't work for us. However, if we're doing the sparse array, that works fine for us because it skips empty elements. It automatically reduce, automatically skips those empty elements. And so that works great. However, if we then wanted to get the average of that by dividing it by re2.length, put some returns there so that shows up better. You can imagine what we get. It's not a correct average because we have empty values and the length of this is going to be let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so it's dividing it by seven. So the last little trick I want to show you when working with sparse arrays or with arrays 
that have undefined or null values is what if you want to just remove them so that whatever work you're doing, you're not going to run into problems. If there's undefined or null values, you're not going to get any N. Or if you're trying to do an average like we're doing here, it's not going to cause a problem because of the elaine. So let's take a look at that first. I'm going to set new array equal to, and let's do re first, re.filter. We use the filter method. Once again, I have a tutorial on this if you need it. And what are we going to do with the filter method? Both reduce and filter, basically what they do is they iterate through every element in array and then do something to it based upon the function you pass in. Now, the filter method requires a predicate function, meaning a function that returns either true or false. So one way we can get rid of null and undefined values is like this. Return val not equal to undefined and val not equal to null. So filter is going to create a new array, but it will not return any values that are undefined and null. The empty values are still going to be in this new array. So let's go ahead and change new array down here. We'll put that in the reduce. Save that. Now let's refresh. So that's getting closer. We're now not getting an NAN when we try to sum those together. We're still not getting the correct average though because we have one empty value left in there. And so how do we get rid of a sparse array? So let's just do the sparse array. We can execute this next filter method on the array we just completed. But I'm going to do the sparse array so we remove all of the empty elements from that one. Basically, we're using filter again. The difference is for the return value, we simply return true. Why do we return just true? Well, remember, filter takes a predicate function, so we either have to get true or false as the result. If the value is true, it will then add it to the new array. The only way the value is going to be true is if it's a, a value that it can actually do something with. Filter is not going to act on any empty elements. And so that's why this works for us. So let me just put a semicolon there, save that, and let's refresh. Whoops. Did not do a very good job commenting out here. All right, try this again. There, now we get three as our average, which is what we should get. It adds up to 15, and then our total of five values, not counting the empty values, so we get three there. So that removes all the sparse arrays. Like I said, we could add the same filter on the end of this first one we did. Let me go ahead and do that. And we can actually do it with chaining. Like that. And that will get rid of the sparse values as well. So doing both of those together, 22 divided by 3, that's about right for the average. So that's a couple of techniques for working with sparse arrays or arrays that have undefined or null values in them. Hopefully that was helpful. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button or click the circle link on the left one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. There I have full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.